Hello and welcome to my channel where I'll be telling you all kinds of strange stories ranging from true crime to some much less believable although just as fascinating tales. For today's video we have the heartless tale of Martin McNeil. Listen in and see what you think. The McNeil family suffered a terrible loss on the 11th of April 2007. The family's matriarch, Michelle, underwent a facelift and was recovering at home in Pleasant Grove, Utah, under the care of her doctor husband. However, just days later, she died of what was, at the time, determined to be natural causes. She left behind a husband, Dr. Martin McNeil, and eight children. She was just 50 years old. However, although the authorities were quick to list that she had died of natural causes, at least some of Michelle's children were not convinced. They weren't the only ones. Other family members and some of Michelle's close friends also had suspicions, and they campaigned to have the investigation into her death reopened. Eventually, their perseverance paid off, and what was uncovered was a devastating shock. It would turn out that Martin McNeil had been hiding secrets from his family for decades. These were secrets that included a hidden felony conviction, multiple mistresses, and falsified transcripts. But there was so much worse to come. Let's start from the beginning. Michelle met Martin in 1978 at an event for young singles organised by the Mormon Church, of which they were both members. To the surprise of everyone they knew, the young couple eloped just a few weeks later, on the 21st of February 1978. Despite the whirlwind nature of the romance, the couple were still married almost 30 years later when Michelle passed away. During that time, they had eight children, four of whom were adopted, and three of the adopted children were from the Ukraine. Martin worked as a psychiatrist, and Michelle was a model. The 11th of April 2007 began like any other day. Martin took his four youngest children to school, the other four were adults by this time, and went to work leaving Michelle to recover from her 3rd of April facelift surgery in bed. At 8.45am, the couple's eldest child, Alexis, called her mother from medical school to check in with her and make sure she was feeling OK. Michelle said she was fine and that she felt good enough to pick her children up from school later that day. At work, Martin was presented with an award. He was very keen to be photographed receiving the award and insisted that the photographer capture him holding it. After this was done, he collected his youngest child from kindergarten and returned home for around 11.30am. He called out to let Michelle know they were back, but there was no reply. So the father and daughter searched the house for her. They finally found her in the bath. As the little girl said, she was all the way in the bathtub, lying in the water, still in her clothes. Martin told his daughter to find help and she ran to a neighbour's house, leaving her father to perform CPR to try to save Michelle. It was Martin who called 911, telling the dispatcher that he was already performing CPR. He then called Alexis and told her, your mother's in the tub and she's not breathing. When the neighbours arrived, they found Martin crouched over Michelle, although the woman was still in the bath with her head under the taps. They helped Martin get Michelle out of the bathtub and the doctor started CPR. He clearly hadn't been doing this when he called 911. It would have been impossible and dangerous if she was still in the water. When the paramedics arrived, 
They took over from Martin and Michelle responded. She gurgled and fluid came out of her mouth. This must have looked suspicious. If Martin had been doing CPR properly and he had no excuse not to since he was a doctor, this response should have happened well before the paramedics started working on her. When he was asked, Martin told the paramedics that he hadn't left the house for very long and that he assumed Michelle had taken too many of her pain pills, slipped in the bath and hit her head. He also told them that he had found Michelle slumped over in the bathtub and her lower body was outside the tub. By the time Michelle reached the hospital, she had passed away and was declared dead on arrival. Dr Maureen Fricky, the medical examiner, concluded that the cause of death had been natural and put it down to cardiovascular disease with hypertension and myocarditis. Just nine days after Michelle McNeil's funeral, Martin arranged for a woman named Gypsy, Gillian Willis, to move in, ostensibly to be a nanny to the youngest children as Martin just couldn't do it all by himself. However, something didn't ring true and Martin's adult children didn't like this arrangement. Alexis went as far as to confront Martin about the true nature of his relationship with Gypsy and as a result, he threw her out of the house. Alexis and the others had been right to be worried, however, as it transpired that Martin and Gypsy were lovers, even sharing the same bed that Martin and Michelle had shared until so very recently. Gypsy started calling herself Mrs McNeil, and Martin did actually propose to her three months after Michelle's death. Alexis, her sister Rachel and Michelle's sister Linda Clough were adamant that Michelle's cause of death was not natural causes and they had always been unconvinced by the original findings. Martin's behaviour since Michelle's death only went towards strengthening their worries that something was amiss and now they were absolutely convinced that she had been murdered. They pushed and pushed to have the case reopened, going to the papers, the authorities and even the governor's office in Utah. It worked. Finally, the case was looked into again. The first thing that was found by a toxicologist was that Michelle's body had contained Valium, Percocet, Ambien and Phenagin, and there was enough of each that she would have been entirely unconscious and it would have been almost impossible to wake her. It was at this point that the medical examiner, Dr Todd Gray, changed the manner of death from natural to undetermined. The cause of death was changed from heart disease to heart disease combined with drug toxicity. Naturally, since a spouse is always going to be a suspect and since Martin was the person to find his unconscious wife, the police began to look deeper into his background. They uncovered a lot and, shockingly for all involved, it was found that pretty much everything Martin McNeil had ever done or claimed to have done was a lie. It began 30 years earlier, when Martin was in his 20s and he began to forge cheques so he could enjoy a lavish lifestyle. He was convicted of this felony and actually spent 180 days in prison for his crime. As soon as he got out, Martin went off to medical school, neglecting to mention his felony on his application. What he did include in his application, however, were two falsified transcripts. Essentially, he used someone else's results to get himself a place on the course. As if this wasn't enough, police also found that he had been in the military, but had been discharged when he had been given a diagnosis of schizophrenia. Thanks to Veteran Affairs, he received over $3,000 a month after leaving the military and had done so for 30 years. Only, he was not schizophrenic and had falsified these results too. There was even more to come. Very soon after Michelle died, Martin tried to put his adopted children up for adoption again, searching for another family to take care of them. He even went as far as to send 16-year-old Giselle back to the Ukraine for what he called a summer holiday, 
Of course, he had no intention of having her back. While she was away, Martin and Gypsy used her identity to create a false social security number, ID cards, and even a birth certificate. However, this fraud soon came to light and the pair were charged with identity theft, among other things. Martin received three years in prison, and on the day he was released, he was charged with the murder of Michelle. The prosecution alleged that Michelle's death had been a premeditated murder, so premeditated in fact that the facelift Michelle had undergone was all part of the plan. After all, Michelle didn't really want to have the surgery and had never mentioned wanting a facelift in the past, but Martin was insistent, telling her it would make her feel so much better about herself and that he would find her so much more attractive. They said that Martin spoke to the surgeon and convinced him to prescribe the medications that would eventually be used to kill Michelle. Being a doctor, this would have been easy for Martin, and the surgeon would have had no particular reason to go against what a fellow doctor was suggesting. The surgeon did, however, make sure that both Michelle and Martin were aware that none of the drugs should be taken together, as that would be dangerous. It was alleged that Martin McNeil used the medication to drug Michelle and then deliberately drowned her in the bath, all so he could be with Gypsy, with whom he had been having an affair. In fact, Alexis had gone with her parents to one of her mother's appointments and noticed that her father was writing down a list of medication at that time. And even when Michelle's own doctor suggested she postpone surgery because of her high blood pressure, Martin pushed her to go ahead anyway. He even became angry when Michelle asked if she could put the surgery off, shouting that if she didn't have the facelift now, she wasn't going to have it at all. Alexis and Rachel spoke to the court about their father. They both said that when Martin turned 50, something changed. He began to take better care of himself, began to work out, wear younger looking clothes and he even went to tanning salons. Michelle confided in her older daughters that she thought Martin was having an affair. She became even more convinced of this after looking through Martin's phone records and finding one number that he was calling frequently. It turned out, of course, that her suspicions were well placed, although she never knew it. It was most likely this concern that meant she was more amenable to the idea of a facelift. If it would make her more attractive to Martin, then she probably thought it was worth doing, even if she wouldn't normally have contemplated it. The truth was that Martin and Gypsy Willis met online as early as 2005, two years before Michelle's murder. Gypsy even attended Michelle's funeral and spoke to Martin after the service. She admitted that she knew Martin was married, but that Martin had promised he wouldn't be for long. Soon, Martin put his plan in place. As well as having the idea about the facelift and subsequent prescribed medication, he pretended that he was unwell and quite weak. If anyone was suspicious about Michelle's death, the idea was that Martin would not be suspected since he just wasn't strong enough to carry out such a crime. This may have been why he left Michelle in the bath instead of dragging her out. He wanted to appear weaker than he really was. He walked with a cane and affected a limp and told various people different stories, such as that he had cancer, specifically cancer in his big toe, or that he had a condition similar to MS. When it came to Michelle's surgery, the surgeon said that he wanted her to stay in hospital overnight just so he could keep an eye on her before discharging her. Apparently, Martin McNeil became frustrated, even angry, at this idea, wanting to take his wife home right away. But the surgeon insisted, and she stayed in the hospital. During the first few days after the facelift, Alexis was the one mostly taking care of Michelle. Martin was working, and she was home from medical school, so she took on the job, happy to do so. However, Alexis noted that Michelle seemed to be extremely sedated, and she asked her father about it. 
He simply shrugged and said that he had probably given her too much medication, but it was nothing to worry about. As a student doctor, Alexis found there was plenty to worry about, but as a daughter, she wanted to believe her father. She did go to Michelle and ask her about her medication, however. Michelle told Alexis that Martin had given her a lot of pills all at once, but that they had made her sick and she threw up. Michelle's face at this time was still bandaged and she couldn't see, so she asked Alexis to let her feel each different pill so she would know the size and shape, and be aware if she was being given too many of one type or another. After a few more days, things seemed to be getting better. The bandages were removed, the scars were healing, and Michelle seemed a lot more alert. She was even taking fewer drugs. Alexis thought it was a good recovery at that time, but the truth is that Martin had probably been spooked by Alexis's doctor's eye, spotting there was something amiss, and held off on his plans until she went back to school. In anticipation of this, he refilled Michelle's prescriptions, even though she had plenty of pills left. On the day that Michelle died, there were even more inconsistencies to deal with. The first revolved around the 911 call Martin made, or rather, the numerous 911 calls. The first call he made, he gave the wrong address. Then he called again, but he kept hanging up and the operator had to keep calling him back. She noticed how angry he was getting that he had to keep speaking to her. Here is a real recording of that call. him because he was yelling very hysterically at me. He seemed very irritated at me and bothered that I was even asking him these questions. Remember, Martin said that Michelle was half in and half out of the bath, but this is not what the neighbours who rushed to help saw, and it's not what Martin's young daughter saw either. They all saw her entirely in the bathtub. Plus, no one could honestly say they had seen Martin's mouth over Michelle's, even though he did seem to be giving chest compressions. It was only when paramedics arrived and did give what's known as the kiss of life that Michelle ejected the water from her lungs. The question had to be asked. Did Martin really want to save Michelle? What made things worse for Martin was that jurors heard how he and Gypsy were in contact on the day Michelle died after she had passed away. There were two phone calls and 30 text messages to prove it. Over six years after Michelle McNeil's death, her husband, Dr Martin McNeil, was found guilty of her murder. He was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. 
Gypsy was never charged with anything in relation to Michelle's death, even though some of Michelle's family are sure she must have at least been aware of the plan to kill Michelle. After serving just two years of his sentence, Martin McNeil took his own life. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed the content, click the subscribe and like buttons so you can receive more content like this strange story every week. See you next time.